to the class of 2000. Uh, what we would like to do, uh, we recognize we're a long ways away from you out here on the field. When your son or daughter is coming up to receive their diploma, you are welcome to come down and take their picture, or if they have a video camera, videotape it. But we ask that once they have received the diploma, then you exit the field. So if we have that kind of cooperation, we're going to allow you to do that. At this time, I would like to invite our class salutatorian, Lindsay Clark, to the podium for an honor essay.
as entertaining as it may be to make fun of someone who is gentle and awkward, or as relieving as it can be to let frustration out on others. Be mature and put yourself in that person's place. If you are persistent, they will start to see you with anger and hatred. You may not push them to violence, but you may make them feel that they have the right to see others the way they have been treated. The chain continues until it reaches someone who's been abused enough that they are ready to kill people. You know the rule about the six degrees of separation, so the next time you, you hear on the news that someone has killed or injured another, ask yourself if it could have been partly your fault. It's impossible to create a utopia where everyone loves each other and is free of hatred and prejudice, especially since many people will probably always be hateful. But wouldn't it be worth it if you could stop just one act of violence by changing your actions? Even small things like letting someone in a rush ahead of you in line in the grocery store or remaining calm in an argument can add up to make a difference. I believe in the importance of having something to be passionate about. A passion is what brings meaning to one's life. This may be another solution to the problem of violence and hatred, as people with a purpose for living are happier and don't want to put their lives in jeopardy by committing a crime. Music has been my passion ever since we played the Victor's March in fifth grade dance. The joy of making music really can't be described, and it is what has gotten me through the stress of score. Simply hearing the sound of the hallway fade into the sound of the bass warming up as I enter the music room is relieving. The goal of perfection which we strive in for a marching band and the excitement as we come closer to the soul has given me something to poke out intensely for two, two and a half months out of each year. When I'm at a band competition, nothing else matters. Aside from that, through band I've made lots of great memories and wonderful friends. Being a musician certainly isn't for everyone, but everyone should have something that they can that they love and that makes any suffering major or seem to be worth it. This can be a sport, a worthy cause, one's religion, one's family, what one does for a living, or even a hobby. Think of the rejoicing of a victor's athlete or of how the historians on the videos we watch junior year love what they do so much that one of them cried about Lewis and Clark. <laughs> Find what makes you happy. You may choose to be passionate about anything as long as this passion is not harmful to others and as long as it doesn't take away from the other important things in your life. If you passionately hate something, try to understand why and if appropriate, change your hate into a love for what the object of your hate seeks to destroy. You should be able to immerse yourself in what you love and return to the world with a fresh perspective. If you haven't found your passion, use your newfound independence to look for it. Now you are about to embark upon the physics lab of life. There will be a lot of work but you'll be having fun with your friends at the same time. It may be confusing, but everyone else will be confused as well. And together, you'll start to figure things out. You may have the opportunity to experiment, but don't look directly into any laser beam. And even though it's something, try not to play too much with a hot wheel card. You may or may not have listened to what I've just been telling you, or what your parents have been telling you. If you don't listen to Mr. Little or read your lab manual, you might do the lab wrong and not realize it until there is not enough time left in class to go back and do it over again correctly. Sometimes you get several trials, and sometimes you don't. However, even if you screw it up in the lab, you can still show in the lab report that you know what you should have done. Most of what we learned in physics came from doing the lab rather than taking notes or reading the book. And now that you understand things, next year's physics seniors will be able to call on you for advice, as your children and grandchildren one day will be able to. So now that I've said what I had to say, proceed.
this ceremony can be broadcast in the auditorium. Thank you to Dr. Ward. You have always supported the class 150% and looked out for our best interest. For everything you have done, from stepping in as student council advisor, to teaching us how to march in and march out to pop in circumstances, which we thankfully only have to hear one more time. <laughs> Thank you. You are a heck of a guy and will be greatly missed. To all the teachers throughout the district, to the class marshals, and to all of you out there this evening, Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Class of 2000, for that generous gift. It will be used wisely. Next will be the presentation of the Director's Book Awards. These are sponsored by our Board of Directors, and passing these out, will be our board chair, Mrs. Celine Katz. Thank you. I'm very happy and pleased and proud and thrilled to be in this new facility and on this beautiful field for your graduation tonight. Um, I would first like to recognize the other members of the board of directors because they are very hard-working members of your community. Terry Malloy, our Vice Chairman, Bill Gilbert, Ellen Breed, Jane Robbins, and Sue Fuller. Today is always a bittersweet day, filled with the sadness of leaving, but the excitement of beginning new things. Today will be the last graduation for our Superintendent of Schools, Wes Kennedy, who has done an outstanding job for our district. I just want to thank him on behalf of the board, the community, and our students. Before I give these awards, I just want to say that educational success is really a partnership. And not just between student and teacher, but between student, family, and teacher. And so I not only applaud our outstanding graduates that sit here today, and our faculty who has not only prepared them well academically, but has really cared about them, but the families who have supported their children, helped them with homework, and just kept pushing them on. So thank you to all of you, and I applaud you. And now I get to do the best part, and that is award the Director's Book Award. These are given in each academic area to students who have been voted by the faculty in each discipline for outstanding achievement and really passionate about the subject area. The first is in the area of science. The book is Pulled Apart by Galen Rowell, and the recipient is Emily Whitney. Life with Monte 
Cristo by Arthur and Barbara Gell, and the recipient is Jody Simon.
for $50. Congratulations, Rebecca. Adam Bailey is the attending Nichols College. He is the recipient of the Nichols College Presidential Scholarship, $6,500 per year, the total value of $26,000. And the Marshwood High School Basketball Booster Scholarship for $200. Congratulations, Adam. John Bischoff. John will be attending Johnson & Wales University. He is the recipient of the Elliott Methodist Church Scholarship for $200. Congratulations, John. Heather Brannon will be attending the University of Maine at Orono. Heather is the recipient of the Pompeii Education Association Scholarship for $300. Congratulations, Heather. Ashley Bridges will be attending Bryant College. Ashley is the recipient of the Weathering Seafood Scholarship for $500. Congratulations, Ashley. Katie Clark, who will be attending the University of Maine at Farmington. She is the recipient of the Maine Steward Incentive Scholarship for $1,000. The University of Maine Scholarship for $1,400. The Educators for Maine Program at $3,000 a year for a total value of $12,000. The Roper Bagwell Memorial Scholarship for $150. Congratulations, Katie. Lindsay Clark, who will be attending Dartmouth College. She is the recipient of the Robert C. Byrd Honors Program, $1,500 a year for four years at a total of $6,000. The Maine Elks Association Most Valuable Student Scholarship for $1,800. The Maine Band Directors Association Scholarship for $500. The Marshford High School Principals Award for $250. The Dartmouth College Endowed Scholarship for $5,879. Congratulations, Lindsay. Patricia Clay will be attending Syracuse University. Patricia is the recipient of the Syracuse University Dean Scholarship for $4,000. Congratulations, Patricia. Karen Conway will be attending the University of Southern Maine. She is the recipient of the Elliott Methodist Church Scholarship for $200. Congratulations, Karen. Meryl Cousins will be attending Bowdoin College. She is the recipient of the Marshwood High School Principals Award for $250. The Robert Gould Scholarship for $250. Congratulations, Meryl. Jacqueline Dukevich will be attending the University of Maine at Farmington. She is the recipient of the Elliott High School Memorial Scholarship for $350. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Denise Easter will be attending York County Technical College. She is the recipient of the Alexander McGregor Memorial Scholarship for $300. Congratulations, Denise. Adrian Emery. Adrian will be attending the University of New Hampshire. She is the recipient of the Maine Masonic Scholarship for $500. The Seacoast Kiwanis Club Scholarship for $500. The University of New Hampshire Dean Scholarship, $5,000 a year for four years for a total of $20,000. The Elliott High School Alumni Scholarship for $350. The John Hill Green Scholarship for $300. Marshwood High School Future Business Leaders of America Scholarship for $50. Congratulations, Adrian. Mara Flavin will be attending George Washington University. She's the recipient of the George Washington University Presidential Academic Scholarship for $8,000. The Marshwood High School National Honor Society Scholarship, $650. The York County Bar Association Speech Scholarship for $1,000. Congratulations, Mara. Matthew Frisbee will be attending George Washington University. He 
gives the recipient of the Kenneth Penny Scholarship for $250, the Elwin Zamarki Memorial Scholarship for $100, the Marshall High School Future Business Leaders of America Scholarship for $75. Congratulations, Matthew. Courtney Frost will be attending the University of Southern Maine. Courtney is the recipient of the Marshall Junior High School T-Shirt Sales Scholarship Fund for $350. Congratulations, Courtney. <laughs> Megan Gardner will be attending the University of Oklahoma. She is the recipient of the University of Oklahoma Academic Scholars Program at $5,500 a year for four years for a total of $22,000. The recipient of the Marshall High School Future Business Leaders of America Scholarship for $100. The recipient of the National Merit Cash Stipend for $750 a year for four years for a value of $3,000. Congratulations, Megan. Kevin Garland will be attending Bentley College. Kevin is the recipient of the Bentley College President's Academic Scholarship for $9,400 a year for four years for a total value of $37,600. And a recipient of the Kennebunk Savings Bank Scholarship for $1,000. Congratulations, Kevin. Tiffany Gerald will be attending the University of Maine at Augusta. Tiffany is the recipient of the First Congregational Church of Elliott for $250. The Marshwood High School Music Booster Scholarship for $500. Congratulations, Tiffany. <laughs> Catherine Gordon will be attending St. Joseph's College of Maine. She will be the recipient of the St. Joseph's College Blue and White Scholarship for $3,000 a year for four years, total value of $12,000. She is the recipient of South Brook Strawberry Festival Scholarship for $1,000. Congratulations, Katie. Sarah Graybill will be attending St. Joseph's College of Maine. She will be the recipient of the St. Joseph's College Top 10 Honor Scholarship at $6,960 a year for four years for a total of $27,840. She is the recipient of the Marshwood Junior High School T-Shirt Sales Scholarship Fund for $350. Congratulations, Sarah. Samuel Harding will be attending St. Lawrence University. He is a recipient of the Marshwood High School Soccer Booster Scholarship for $250. Congratulations, Sam. <laughs> Stephen Hay will be attending the University of Maine at Orono. He is a recipient of the Roger B. Hill Humanities Scholarship for $450. The Omer F. and Lenora L. Tarr Scholarship for $500. The Sydney A. Spiegler Music Scholarship for $500. The, very, the Greater Piscataqua Community Foundation Sandy McDonald Scholarship for $650. The Marshwood High School Music Boosters Scholarship for $500. Congratulations, Stephen. <laughs> Elizabeth Irvine McDermott will be attending Bates College. She is the recipient of the Elliott Lions Club Scholarship for $300. Congratulations, Elizabeth. <laughs> Brian Johnson will be attending White, Plain, White Pines College. He is the recipient of the White Pines College Scholarship for $1,500. Congratulations, Brian. <laughs> Brandon Kennedy. He will be attending York County Technical College. He is the recipient of the South Berwick Rotary Vocational Scholarship for $500 and the Brian Beckner Memorial Scholarship for $300. Congratulations. <laughs> Matthew Kilborn will be attending the University of Maine at Orno. 
also the recipient of the Dolphin Foundation Scholarship at $3,000 a year for four years for a total of $12,000. And a recipient of the Marshall High School Principals Award for $250. Congratulations, Sarah.
and a South Rotary Scholarship for $1,000. Congratulations to Emily. Malia Willey will be attending Assumption College. She is a recipient of the Assumption College Presidential Scholarship for $11,000 for four years for a total of $44,000. Also, the Assumption College Scholarship for $2,300 with a Marshall High School Principals Award for $250. Congratulations, Malia. Devin Williams will be attending Harvard College. Devin is a recipient of the Harvard College Early Decision Scholarship for $2,000. The Harvard College Scholarship for $2,500. The Kevin Currier Memorial Scholarship for $150. Congratulations, Devin. Rachel Woodman will be attending the University of Maine at Orono. Rachel is a recipient of the Maine Student Incentive Scholarship for $1,000 and the First Parish Federated Church Scholarship for $500. Congratulations, Rachel. Let's have a nice round of applause for all of our recipients. Next, we will hear an honor essay from our class valedictorian, Jody Simon. Over the past few weeks, we, the members of the class of 2000, have received a great deal of recognition. I don't know what I've heard or seen the word congratulations so many times. While it is true that we have accomplished much, both as individuals and as a group, it is important that we recognize that we have not done so alone. There have been numerous people who have helped us along the way. Today I challenge you to think about who those people are in your life and to make every effort to thank them. The most obvious people for most of us are our family. The mom who cheered from the sidelines during Rex soccer games. The dad who waited patiently in the parking lot of the dance studio during countless rehearsals. The brother or sister who sat through hours of what must have been very painful junior high concerts and who still picked you up at the school dance later that week so you wouldn't have to be embarrassed to be seen riding with your parents. Although some of us, myself included, are not fortunate enough to see our extended families frequently, we still must recognize the impact that they have made on our lives. We should be forever grateful to the grandmothers who never failed to have our favorite treats for parents when we did have the chance to visit, the aunts who always remembered our birthdays, and in my case, my Uncle George who drove 12 hours in a weekend to be my sponsor for confirmation, and who, incidentally, said that I had to mention his name in my speech. <laughs> Upon starting school, we gained another support system, comprised of our teachers. We should realize how lucky we are to be part of a school system where the teachers are so supportive of their students' endeavors, academic, artistic, and athletic. I have never been to a school or community event in which Marshall students are involved and not seen a faculty member present. Our teachers also help to take care of us from day to day, forming a family away from home. There are many members of this class who have not been greeted by a coach gagging, how are you doing? or had Mrs. Burnham on their case about completing this or that before graduation. And then there's Mrs. Tugel, who has always provided a listening and genuinely sympathetic ear to our complaints and has then become a representative voice for her students. Our staff has gone above and beyond merely transferring information, but has worked to truly make a difference in their students' lives. As we've grown older, we've developed closer relationships, and our friends have become more important to our well-being. It would be impossible to list all the memories. They are special and unique to each of us, and I'm sure your books are full of them. Who can ever forget the people who gave you shoulders to cry on after that first broken heart, or came to every basketball game, even though they knew you would sit the bench the whole time? On a happier note, we'll always remember the fun of preparations for prom, pushing homework aside for laughs in study hall, and summers of fun just relaxing at the beach. The people mentioned thus far have been individuals that you probably have already thought of, 
and possibly have already said. I urge you now to think of the less obvious people. What about the Sunday school teachers, school volunteers, camp counselors, dance instructors, and little league coaches that fill their childhood years? Have you been back to visit that Girl Scout leader or piano teacher who first encouraged you and built your confidence? How about your regular babysitters or the neighbors who let you play hide and seek in their yards and brought tickets to the ice cream smorgasbord every year? These people are often overlooked in the excitement of leaving home, but it is important that we let them know how much they have done for us. In turn, we should take their example to heart and strive to encourage the next generation of children. It's logical that the people that can be thanked directly are those who have most directly affected our lives. We must not forget those, however, who have made impacts on our lives indirectly. It is essential that we realize our fortune in having not only the necessary support to achieve our goals, but in having the very opportunities. These were secured for us by previous generations. A recent discussion in history class concluded with a consensus that our generation has been relatively sheltered. We have never experienced a major war or economic hard time. Because of this, we often take our lives as we know them for granted. In order for us to develop into mature and caring adults, this cannot be the case. Most of us have either read or at least heard of Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation. It tells the story of just some of the men and women who came of age during the Great Depression and the Second World War and went on to build modern America. There are stories of heroes, of celebrities, and of ordinary people who simply did what needed to be done. As Brokaw writes, at a time in their lives when their days and nights should have been filled with innocent adventure, love, and the lessons of the workaday world, they were fighting, often hand to hand, in the most primitive conditions possible, across the bloody landscapes of France, Belgium, Italy, Austria. They fought their way up a necklace of South Pacific islands few had ever heard of before, and made them a sixth part of American history. Islands with names like Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Okinawa. They were in the air every day, in skies filled with terror, and they went to sea on hostile waters far removed from the shores of their homeland. Broca and others like him have encouraged recognition of this generation recently. I wish to invest another group of Americans, a group that is often overlooked, forgotten, or criticized. These are the men and women who served their country in Korea and Vietnam. Some people may agree with our country's actions during these two conflicts. Others may not. In reality, individual opinions do not matter. Agree or disagree, there is no denying that these veterans of these forgotten wars deserve recognition for their courage and their sacrifices. This year is the 50th anniversary of Korea, yet how much have you heard about it? The veterans of Vietnam are still among today's workforce. Are they given the respect that they deserve? It is silly when people direct their anti-war feelings from decades ago towards men and women who simply did what they had to do. In these conflicts, the United States was attempting to secure freedom not just for ourselves, but for other countries. In doing so, a lot of sacrifice was involved. As the Korean War Memorial agrees, freedom is not free. Let us never forget that the liberties we enjoy today have been paid for by those who lived and died before us. With this in mind, we must learn to respect these generations of Americans who are now moving into their later years. Not only the veterans, but all of the people who have made contributions to life as we know it today. But in our fast-paced, computer-based world, we often forget about the older generation. They have lived through a lot and therefore have much to say. Listen to them. There are thousands of others who have made it possible for us to be sitting where we are today. During the course of our lifetimes, we will only be able to thank a small percentage of them personally. Make an effort to thank those that you can. As for the others, show your gratitude to them by becoming an active, involved, and contributing person. Let their tradition of service live on even after they have left this world. Learn from the patience of your preschool teachers and from the selflessness of all those soldiers who gave their lives. Take pride in yourself, your community, and your country. Encourage a child. Listen to the ideas of others. Make your life worth something. That's a tall order, some might think. What happens to just getting through each day? I don't believe that this is enough to lead a fulfilling life. 
there must be some meaning. This now brings us to the age-old question, what is the meaning of life? As a possible answer to this inquiry, I would like to close with a story found in Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul, a collection of pieces on life, love, and learning. The story is entitled The Mirror. Dr. Papadero, what is the meaning of life? The usual laughter followed and people stirred to go. Papadero held up his hand and filled the room and looked at me for a long time, asking with his eyes if I was serious and seeing from my eyes that I was. I will answer your question. Taking his wallet out of his hip pocket, he fished into a leather bill and brought out a very small round mirror, about the size of a quarter. And what he said went like this. When I was a small child during the war, we were very poor and we lived in a remote village. One day, on the road, I found the broken pieces of a mirror. A German motorcycle had been wrecked in that place. I tried to find all the pieces and put them together, but it was not possible. So I kept only the largest piece, this one, and by scratching it on a stone, I made it round. I began to play with it as a toy and became fascinated by the fact that I could reflect light into dark places where the sun would never shine, in deep holes and crevices and dark closets. It became a game to get light into the most inaccessible places I could find. I kept the little mirror, and as I went about my growing up, I would take it out in idle moments and continue the challenge of the game. As I became a man, I grew to understand that this was not just a child's game, but a metaphor for what I might do in my life. I came to understand that I am not the light, nor the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, knowledge, is there and it will shine in many dark places only if I reflect it. I am a fragment of a mirror whose design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, I can reflect light into the dark places of the world, into the black places in the hearts of men, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. This is what I am about. This is the meaning of my life. Thank you. Before uh, we hear from the concert band, I would like Lindsay Clark, Kevin McGreevy, and Jody Simons to stand. And I would like us all to applaud them for their outstanding speeches tonight.
great honor for me to introduce our next speaker, that's our superintendent of schools. But before I do that, where this is his last graduation, and he is retiring, the Marshwood, Marshwood High School staff would like to present Mr. Kennedy with a chair for him to relax in during retirement. <laughs> and we have a nice chair here uh, that says Marshwood High School, and it's, the name is engraved Wesley J. Kennedy. Okay, I'll pick it up.
prepared me for this change. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the faculty for everything they've done for us. I think I speak to the class when I say that you've been instrumental in making us the men and women that we are today. So thank you for being incredible teachers and mentors and friends in and outside of the classroom. I don't know where I'd be without you. These last four years have been the best years of my life. With this class, I've learned about life, other people, and who I really am. It is experiences in high school that helps to shape and mold a person to who they will become. I have no doubt that the experience we have received at Marshall will have given us all the opportunity to become outstanding citizens and wonderful people in this world. We made it. And now the challenge of life lies before us. It is you, the graduating class of 2000, that must grab the bull by the horns and you must live your life your way. Use what you've learned and who you've met as an advantage. Life isn't easy. Your time at Marshall was an advantage, a key to help you open the many doors of life. Come Monday, we enter the real world. No more school to shelter and structure our lives. I wish you all the best of luck in your life. To those of you who are going to begin working, work hard. The work, the work world is tough, and I wish you all the success that you want to have. To those of you who are going on to school, study hard. It is a great thing to see a person who wants to continue in a quest of knowledge. Knowledge is the ultimate advantage. I myself will be attending the University of Maine and majoring in VCR operations and hope that someday I can come back and teach history at Marshall High School. <laughs>
that's AB 35. We have the best of the best. I want you to stand and applaud them right now.